Hello everybody and welcome to this Rhino video tutorial. I am Vanessa Steg, and in today's tutorial I would like to walk through the process of making moldings. These are decorative elements that ornament architectural parts such as doors, ceilings, and so forth. As you can see, I've made a box with the box command and a couple of rectangles that will represent the rails for the moldings. So let's get started. I will hop over to the front view and go over to the curve tools. Now run the extract subcurve command. This will allow me to extract only the top line of my rectangle. Click twice and then press enter. With the line still selected, run the rebuild command. The curve originally had two control points. Let's increase that to 6 and increase the degree to 3. Then press OK. Now press F10 or the icon on the standard toolbar to activate the control points. All of these middle points have been added. Select the two central points. Click in the arrow pointing in the Z direction and enter the distance to move those points to, say, 5 units. Then select both curves and join them back into a single closed loop. Let's hop over to the perspective view again. And now let's focus on making the shape that will define the moldings. Let's go over to the right view and right click on ortho. If your ortho angle is not set to 45, click on settings. You can set the degree for the ortho snap to every 45 degrees. Then press OK. At this point, I will momentarily activate grid snap and run the polyline command. Polyline is the only command we will use to make the shape of our molding. Now let's try to snap to the end or the midpoint of our bottom rail. There it is. Now with grid snap on, I will snap a centimeter away and then a centimeter right up to the door. Now I will deactivate grid snap. At this point, we will only enter distances and use ortho to build the shape. Let's start by typing in 0 0.5 and holding down the shift key to lock it the direction in Y. Then again, say 1, enter, and hold down the shift key and click in the Z direction. Let's try it again, 0 0.5, press enter, and hold down the shift key and click. At this point we can change the mode from line to arc. I will now set a radius of 0.25, press enter, and activate the helpers in the command line to place a 45 degree radius. Again, 0.25, press enter, and click to lock the arc at 45 degrees. Now, type M and press enter or click on mode to switch back to line. Let's type 0.5, press down shift key and click, and again 0.5, hold down the shift key and click. Now, I will make an inclined line. I will switch back to arc, set a radius of 0.2, and then click back to line and drag a line out from the profile of the door. At this point, you can just use the close option in the command line to close the first point down to the last. If you've made a mistake along the way, Note that you have the undo option that will only undo the last point you clicked, and so forth. Let's just close. This will be the design for my molding. Select the curve, and let's go over to the perspective view. With the curve selected, and 
Gumball activated. Hold down Alt and then drag the arrow pointing in Z. Snap the cross section to the bottom part of the top rail. Pressing Alt before dragging allows you to make a copy of the selected object. Now let's start building the actual moldings. Go over to the surface tools, run the sweep one rail command. Select the rail, select the cross section, and press enter twice. If the preview looks fine, just click OK. Let's repeat the same process for the top part. Right click to reactivate the last command. Select the rail, select the cross section, and press enter twice. Then just click on OK. Now let's go over to the solid tools. We will now subtract the volumes of the moldings from the volume of the door. To do this, let's run the Boolean difference command. Select the door as the object to keep, press enter. Make sure delete input is set to yes so that the molding parts disappear. And then select the two objects and press enter to end the command. There we go. Now I would like to push the two inner surfaces. To do this, I will press down Control and Shift and sub object select both of the surfaces. Again, Control Shift and select the bottom one. Now click inside the arrow pointing perpendicular to the selected surfaces in the gumball and type in a distance that will conveniently push those frames inward, say 0.5. There we go. As mentioned previously, this same process can be applied for other architectural parts, such as door plates or ceiling moldings. Let's take a look at that. I will right click in the command line to access a list of the recently used commands. Search for the sweep one rel command in the list and select. This time I will click on the chain edges option. This will allow me to select multiple curves or edges that will define my single rail. Then press enter. Select your cross section. Press enter and enter again. Make sure in the preview that the sweep is looking good. If it's not the case, select another frame style and then press OK. And there we go. That's all for today. Thank you for watching.